Okay, I think we are going to start. So thank you everyone for joining us today on Tubi Shvat for this very special cooking demonstration coming to us live from Israel. I would also like to thank our Israel Affairs Committee for putting this together with me. Um, this program today is dedicated to the memory of our longstanding member, Millie Lev, who passed away this month. Millie, her husband Jerry, and their family have been members of Beth Tikva for over 40 years. Millie was involved in almost every shul committee, including Musica, Beth Tikva Women, and she also sat with me on our catering committee. Millie was always cooking in our sisterhood kitchen. She was a foodie at heart and shared many of her wonderful recipes with members, whether it be at the art show, Kiddush, or making desserts for our Musica concerts. I should mention that her daughter, Jennifer, also joins us here today. I'd like to introduce our special guests who will be leading today's program. Shauna goodman Sohn is a graduate of McGill University with a BA in her art history. She then pursued her studies as a chef, graduating from the Natural Gourmet Cooking School and in pastry arts from the Institute of Culinary Education, both in New York City. She has also trained at the Cordon Bleu School in Paris. And for the past 23 years, she has been teaching, catering and cooking for clients in New York, Philadelphia, Toronto, Montreal, and now in Ranana, where she lives with her husband, Todd, and their three sons. Shauna also has a very strong connection to Beth Tikva. Her in-laws are Sheila and Gersh Stone, who have been members since 1967. Accompanying Shauna today will be Orit Levy, who is an Israeli tour, tour guide and comes to us from Jerusalem. Orit will be taking us on a tour of the market or shuk, to show us how to shop for the ingredients we'll be, we will be using in today's cooking demonstration. Please remain on mute, but send your questions to us in the chat. We will aim to address them as we go along. And Shauna will take questions at the end. And now I'd like to welcome Shauna and Arit. Hi everybody, it is such a thrill to be here today. Um, I actually feel a little bit emotional um, when I think about, I am emotional, wow. I was first <laughs> engaged, I was engaged in Toronto to, as you said, Sheila and Garrett's son, Todd, who is brought you here to Israel. Okay, I have to get these emotions in check. And um, we came here because Todd really had grew up at Beth Tikva Synagogue with um, a great rabbi, Rabbi Fader, who also since passed away and um, was instrumental in building a really strong sense of Zionism, which he has since passed to us and our three boys. And we have been living in Ranana for the past seven years. So Beth Tikva was my first landing shul when I moved to Toronto when I was still dating Todd. And I was welcomed with open arms. Um, and it was in fact Beth Tikva that was one of my first teaching jobs. So I know that sisterhood kitchen. I remember when it was redone and it was shiny and beautiful. And those sisterhood women welcomed me and taught me uh, many, many tricks. They came out with a great cookbook, which was a Bible for many. And it really, you know, shaped me as a Jewish woman and I'm really navigating Jewish Toronto. So it really brings me full circle to today. I am living in Ranana. Our three boys are with us, thank God, here in our home. Um, we recently made Aliyah a month ago, hence my Israeli Degel here, but I carry my Canadian soul with me wherever I go. And um, the idea of celebrating Tu Bishvat with everybody is huge for me, um, really bridging all my worlds. Um, and like Gail said, Millie was a force of good for me in my life. She gave me my first catering job. She was always ready to talk recipes, always had a good photocopied recipe in her purse to share and really always welcomed me um, wherever we went in our family as it grew. So um, our condolences to the Lev family and Millie's legacy will live on in many, many kitchens. 
and her spirit and her smile is always with us. Um, I am so excited um, to be introducing my sidekick and my Jerusalemite bestie, Orit Levy, who we met through leading a women's tour to Israel three years ago. Um, it was a shidduch in heaven. When you talk about when Israel connects with North America, someone was looking out for us. We're like the Betty and Veronica, the Ashkenazi <laughs> Sephardi, but we love to laugh. We love food. We love being together. And we share eight days together every year, leading women from all over, celebrating Israel's abundance. It's called Shefa, which means in Hebrew, abundance. And we laugh, we giggle, we cry, we hug, we learn, we expand in all ways from all the food and drinking. <laughs> and um, I'm so happy to be with her today to travel for the next hour together through the Shuk, back into my kitchen in Ranana. So you're going to travel to the suburbs, you're going back to Jerusalem, and we're going to do a lot of back and forth. So I hand it to Orit, who's sitting in her living room in Jerusalem. Here you go. Hi, I'm so excited and so happy uh, to be here with you today, especially in Tu Bishvat, which is very meaningful for me. Um, and since COVID-19 has become uh, actually more than ever. And so I'm really happy to, uh, to be here. I'm, um, I live in Jerusalem. I'm a Jerusalemite uh, tour guide. I was born and raised here. Uh, I was in the culinary field for many, many, many years. And uh, thank God I'm not there anymore, but then uh, <laughs> not in the restaurant business. Uh, but then a few, like 10 years ago, I uh, became a licensed tour guide. And since then, I'm combining my greatest loves, which is uh, food and travel and people. Uh, and I, as Shauna said, uh, doing it every year with Shauna in the abundance, Shefa, which is something that I wait for for the whole year because it's the most amazing experience uh, that I have every year. Um, the, um, I live in Jerusalem in an area which is called um, uh, Rasko, which is right next to a valley, the Valley of the Cross, Emek Hamatzleva. This is very green and beautiful area, and it's in a walking distance to my second home, my favorite place in Jerusalem, which is Machane Yehuda Market. Uh, Machane Yehuda Market is a home for me for the last, um, well, since I was a kid, actually, I know the market and I was shopping there with my mother. But over the last 10 years, I guide a lot of culinary tours over there. And this is really my second home. I'm there almost every day. And I want to share with you just um, between the first lockdown to the second one, uh, and then bef between the second to the third, I've uh, actually filmed the market. Uh, and it was a great experience for me because usually I travel there with people. And now when I don't have the tourists, I said, OK, I have my now uh, bring the market to them. So this is uh, what I've tried to do. And what I'm gonna share with you during this uh, beautiful meeting is um, a few um, places in the market that I find uh, very inspiring. Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna share with you a very short uh, film that I've done uh, of the market, just to get you into the mood and the atmosphere. So we'll start in a minute. And there we go. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and um, I just want to say that um, what Chana and I are trying to do is in a way to bring Israel and the market to you. 
So uh, back to you, Shauna, what are we going to cook? <laughs> so the first recipe we're going to be starting with is tahina, because tahina is the ubiquitous drizzle that you put on everything here. And I feel like it's a staple that you need to know how to play with because it can be enjoyed savory, drizzled on a falafel, or it can be enjoyed sweet in a piece of chalva. So I'm going to play with, show you what the multitude things you can do. But first, the basic thing is starting off with an awesome product. Yes, this bottle is huge. And um, yes, it feels like ooh, uh, a little daunting, but believe it or not, it probably takes me a month to go through something like this. So that is how much it's used here. And for all those who don't know, tahini is made of sesame seeds sesame seeds, just plain old sesame seeds that have been roasted and ground up, which you're going to learn more about in the market. And it comes in bottles. And often it's very liquidy, which is a good sign. And like a fresh peanut butter, it needs to be shaken because it does separate. It's all fat, but good fat, not fat to be afraid of. Fat, fat to embrace, fat that will make your nails hard and your hair shiny. And believe it or not, with all us being inside all the time, we'll take whatever it takes to get that glow happening. So I love it. It does not have to be refrigerated. Um, people are often intimidated by it. And if you walk away with one thing today amongst many, um, I'd love you to open up your bottle of tequila if you bought it or you came home with it from a trip from Israel and you didn't know what to do with it. This is your chance. So I don't know who's cooking with me. I can't see anybody. I just got multifocals. So I'm still a little bit like woozy, but we're figuring it out. And so I'm taking my tina. That's the number one thing. Hey, it's good exercise. The bigger bottle you get, the bigger muscles you get. And what you want to do is just pour it into your bowl. You see, it's this gorgeous caramelly kind of color. It's not caramel, but it looks like caramel. And what we want to do is we want to flavor it. It already has great flavor already, and you can just use it drizzled on stuff just like this, but we're going to make a sauce out of it. So what we're going to be adding is some lemons. And whenever you're using lemons, and these in the Tubi Shvat Spirit are falling off everybody's trees right now. So um, these are literally farm to table. Um, so what I do to get my lemons juicy is I literally roll them on the counter to get their juices rolling. Great thing to do. Remember when you used to have a telephone like that, um, you know, with a cord. And anyhow, it's something to do when you're bored, you're sitting in front of Netflix, which we're doing a lot of, and basically cut it open and take your fork. Um, and you don't need any fancy equipment. You just need a fork and you need to take your lemon and look what happens. Look how much lemon comes out of that um, look how much juice comes out of the lemon. I'm feeling a little distracted. Here we go. And then the other half. Um, so this is partly because they're in Israel, but also because um, they're at room temperature. Um, and, I, and I got them rolling, I squeezed, I got them moving and the fork is magic. You don't need any other gimmicks. I know everybody wants to sell you a gimmick. I'm not gonna sell you any other gimmicks. The other thing we're gonna be adding, a bulb of garlic, we're not adding a bulb, we're adding a clove of garlic. If anybody has tummy issues with garlic, you don't need to add the garlic. But when in Israel, we add garlic to everything. So what we do is we take the garlic and smash it. And that's called bruising your garlic. That literally takes the paper off. If your garlic is smushy or airy or there's nothing there, not good anymore. If it has a green sprout going out of it, no problem, it just means it's changed temperatures. Just remove the green sprout and you're in business. Take your peeler, your garlic press, and push it in. And I'm using a garlic press as opposed to using chopping it because I want it to be more fine. So some of you are going, oi, so much garlic. If you don't want that much garlic, you don't need to add all that garlic, okay? You guys are the recipe creators. So what happens when you add liquid to another liquid? You think it's going to get liquidier, right? More loose. Opposite. Hafuch. It goes opposite and actually seizes up. So you see, look what happened. It got 
thick. My beautiful, beautiful, smooth um, Sina got very, very thick. And this is when people go, oh, I don't understand this product. I shouldn't have bought it. And why did I buy it? And I don't know what to do with it. Ah, start adding cold water. Okay, slowly, slowly, mix, mix. Again, we're just using my fork. Nothing else is happening. And believe me, this class is live. My Wi-Fi could go off. My kids can come downstairs very quickly looking for supper because that's what they're always looking for. And anything can happen. So I am just relying on my little fork and my ceramic bowl here. And it's getting beautiful. And what's happening is it's even lightening up, which is great because this is what you want it to look like. And depending what you're going to be using your uh, tina sauce for, you may want it thick to dip your carrots into as a nash at four o'clock. Or you may want it more loosey to drizzle on your falafel or your grilled chicken that we're gonna be making tonight. So here we go. We have this beautiful, beautiful, I hope you can see. It smells like garlic, but it also smells like, like, like roasted sesame seeds. It just smells really, really lovely. And if any of you also like, you can add a little bit of cumin. And so cumin brings it right to the shook. And if you don't like cumin, you don't need to add it. And of course, we always need to remember, we need a little bit of some salt and we need a little bit of pepper. And as they say here in Israel, zehu. This is it, super, super simple. Can be made, can be kept in your fridge for three days. Um, you can't freeze it. So that's why I have a big bottle in my pantry at all times. I pour it when I need it. And it's the quickest thing to make, um, especially when people come over, which no one's actually doing these days here. But when they do, <laughs> you will be ready. So I pass it to Orit to show you where Tzchina comes from. Okay, so as you said, first of all, I've tasted the Shana's Tzchini and it's amazing. And um, in Jerusalem, there's a very famous place that sells tahini. There's a lot of different uh, tahini factories, but this one is really popular. And it's a great place because they produce tahini from 1947. And as Shana said, tahini is the Israeli ketchup. It's amazing. We eat it with everything. So I want to share a video that I've made on tahini in a place that is called Mamlechet Achalva. Uh, Mamlechet Achalva, as I've said, is a very uh, famous place in uh, Shuk Machane Yehuda. And I hope um, you'll see more about it. If you're Israeli, you have to love tahini. We eat it with everything. It's like the Israeli ketchup in a way. We eat it just like that. We make a dip out of it. Uh, we put it on baba ganoush, on salads. Tahini is one of my favorite things. And we are at a place that is called Mamlechet Chalva, the Chalva Kingdom. So what's the connection between Chalva and tahini? We'll see it in a minute. Welcome to the King Tahini. I have the best sesame of the world. Come taste. Tahini is made from sesame. The best sesame comes from Ethiopia. It is cleaned and then put in this amazing machine that takes the sesame seeds, as you can see, and grinds them in between the stones and it comes out as 100% sesame seed paste. So this is Oren from Mamlech Tachalva, and he is going to give me some tastes of tahini. This is the taste of tahini. So the first one is the basic one, yeah, right? It's the classic. And this is 100% sesame seed paste, the classic one, which I love, and I put on everything. How many flavors do you have? I have 25 different flavors. 25 different flavors yes. of tahini? Yeah. That's amazing. What, what, like what, for example? Like sweet, salty, spicy. I would try the spicy. Try? Yeah, the spicy. spicy one? Yeah. It's I'm Moroccan. I should, uh, I should be fine. Is it hot? Kharif? Uh, it's yeah. Spicy chili. Oh, spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have something sweet? Yeah. Uh -huh. You want coriander, you want the uh, dates, honey, chocolate, nougat. Chocolate, of course, chocolates. I have to. Wow, chocolate, tchina, magniv. Oh my. This is like a dessert, it's amazing. 
So they have 25 different tahini flavors, and you also have halva, right? Yeah. So can we go and uh, taste some halva? Why not? So halva is made from sesame, sugar, and flavors. They have 101 different kinds of flavors of halva. You can see here lemon and chocolate, pecan, uh, hazelnut, cashews, chocolates, lots of chocolates. And one of my favorites is whiskey, pistachios, and the classic one, as you can see over here. I have this, the special one. You have a whiskey one. Whiskey, yes. Yeah. This is the whiskey one. Okay. Oh, wow. Very Amazing. special. Thank you. There's a time Okay, what else do you have? And I have pistachio. pistachio. This is the best seller. Wow. Let's look at that. Wow. Okay, so So I hope you enjoy the part of the tahini. And uh, tahini goes very well with uh, salad and it goes very well with Shana. We're gonna be making now the salad in celebration of Tubi Shvat. Um, again, back to the earth, back to the trees and back to the bounty. And the first thing we're gonna do in every salad that I love I love for it to have a crunch, something that's going to give some interest to the, the mouth and to the experience. And every nationality has a crouton of some sort. So we're going to be making pita chips because pita bread is the ubiquitous bread of Israel. And I don't know about you, even when I lived in Montreal, when I lived in Toronto, somehow I was always left with one pita. And the sad little pita left in the, in the bag. And I was like, oh, what do I do with it? Nobody wants it. It's getting old. I can't build a whole meal about it. So I would throw it in my freezer. And then I realized I had all these one bags of pita. So what I decided to do is you make a crouton out of it, make a pita chip. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Um, in fact, my kids are like, mommy, this is so fresh. Why would you make a blend and why would you dry it out? And I'm like, okay, it's just for the demo today. I had no frozen, frozen pita because... I'm not chopping that off and I'm not doing getting out of my house very often. So we're working with what we got. And so I happen to have beautiful, fresh pita, which, oh my God, it goes blue to the next day. So you have to eat it right away. And there's no um, preservatives in it at all. So the fastest way to open the pita up, because it creates a natural pocket, is you take your scissors, your kitchen scissors, not your arts and crafts scissors, and you basically cut around and use your thumb and your fingers and just rip it apart. It's amazing pita bread when you see it made, how it forms a natural pocket. So now we have two sides and um, it's a great activity to do with kids, especially because they're zoomed out and anything that is experiential these days will get your kids attention. And you could talk anything while they talk, why, why, um, why I'm a big believer that they'll, they'll soak in way more while doing something at the same time. So we have two different sides of our pita bread. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be painting my pita bread with some extra virgin olive oil, which literally my computer is leaning on my five gallon jug that comes from the north of Galil, in the Galil. And I decant it in my jar, in my, my uh, bottle. So you see the most gorgeous color of it. It's liquid gold and it's fruity and it's aromatic and it's got great body. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my, my pastry brush, which is not my barbecue brush. And I basically just paint on this yummy fruity olive oil. So not only is it gonna behave like my glue for my spices, but it's also going to add amazing flavor. So I'm not drenching it. I'm not like soaking it. I'm not dredging it. I lightly painted it. So these words are very important. So as you see, just like that. And um, then I'm going to do the magic spice, my za'atar. See, za'atar, my homemade jars. This was an activity during COVID too. And basically take your za'atar. And za'atar is a mixture of many different spices. 
Um, it's got the sesame seeds, hence the theme of our class. Um, it's got hyssop, it has sumac in it, it has salt. And what we're gonna be doing is generously drizzling it on our pita bread. Not a little sprinkle, a generous. I want it to look green like the earth, okay? So as you see right here, I'm gonna put them into my oven at 350 degrees. One sec, and it's preheated. And we are gonna forget about that. And then, ta-da, look what happens in 15 minutes, like the TV show. Um, the idea of it is that you wanna draw the moisture out of the bread so that you create these beautiful crisps that you hear crunch. Does everybody hear that? If I can get a thumbs up there. Just crunch. There you go. That's what you want. If you're still tugging away at your pita bread, it doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means it's not fully crunched. So just put it back in the oven. It thrives on neglect. It's the one thing that thrives on neglect these days. So just crack it up. That one's a little, needs a little bit more time in the oven. There we go. And the thinner they are, the, the faster they're gonna crunch up. So you guys get the idea of this. We make beautiful pita, pita chips. And these pita chips can be used for our salad or they can also just be used to uh, scoop up the trina spread that we just made before. So I wanna talk about the salad. The salad is a super easy salad. No washing lettuce, isn't that great? And no spinning the lettuce, no drawing the lettuce, no wrapping it in towels. We are making a chunk salad. And our chunk salad is gonna be a delight for the eyes. Number one, we're starting off with uh, my Hebrew version, melafafon, that is a funny name for a small little cucumber. And these are like, you know, in Canada, I know you can buy Lebanese, they call them Lebanese cucumbers, I guess, but they're Israeli. And um, they're great, you don't need to peel them, just wash them and cut them open. And here we go, we have our bowl of um, cut up, and this is always pull out all your fancy bowls now because you're home, this is the time to use the good dishes. So this is the one I made during my food, my little activity. Then we're gonna be adding some gorgeous peppers. You can add, the recipe calls for a green pepper. If you like green pepper, personally, I'm, I'm, I like to play with my peppers. And Israel is known for their peppers, their peppers and their tomatoes. So let's celebrate what Israel's great at. And um, so I have gorgeous orange peppers and I have some um, I, uh, red peppers. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of some spice to it. And my spice is gonna be using green onion, also called a scallion. And you can use the whole onion, okay? Very important. A lot of people think you, you can only use this part and they throw away this part. You can use the whole thing and it adds great flavor without the, the sharpness to it. So I have my green onion here like this, but again, we're not going out so often. So if you don't have green onions or yours aren't looking so good, you can always substitute and use a little bit of red onion, again, because you eat with your eyes. So um, I love purple onion, and I find that if it's ever too strong, cut it up and put it in a bowl of ice water, and that will take the bite away so you won't start crying, okay? So we have red, if you want, if you don't have the green onions. And then what we have are pièce de résistance, the ultimate cherry tomato, another Israeli invention. Um, and so here in Israel, these like are everywhere and they don't get old and they're so yummy. So I, I found a gorgeous box of yellow ones. So again, I'm really into eating with your eyes. And um, I also have some red ones. So why not throw them into the party and just cut them into quarters. So everything is represented well. So as you see, it's looking like a great party in here, right? Like you're already excited to eat it. And we have to add some green to it. So I have my herbs in a glass and I treat them like a plant because hey, it's chubby shot. And I'm using flat leaf parsley. You can also use curly parsley. I'm not the biggest fan. I find flat leaf parsley has a much better flavor to it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut off a part of it. And this is for my chicken soup tomorrow, okay? It goes right into my chicken soup. The stems are full of flavor. And I'm also gonna be adding some, anybody know what this is? Nana, okay? Nana is also known as mint. And with Nana, you just wanna pull off the leaves to it. You don't wanna use the stems because the stems can be very woody and nobody wants to bite in woodiness. And notice that I'm doing the herbs last because what happens when you chop herbs and you, um, they touch the knife, they're gonna oxidize and they'll turn black. 
So anytime you're cutting herbs for anything, you want to make sure that you do that last. And it's not something you want to do days in advance because it will turn black. And that's, as they say here, lo naim. So what I'm doing is I take my herbs, I have a big, beautiful ball, take a smell, say a blessing, be grateful. And if you like cilantro, throw that into the party. I will be expelled out of my house if there's cilantro in my house, but I love it. And you can really play with your herbs, roll them up into a ball and they're nice and clean and they're dry. So they just chop up so nicely when they're dry. They're, they don't chop up nicely when they're wet. And truthfully, I want at any time you're dealing with any leaves, salad, anything, you want them to be dry um, when you put them, when you, when you have a salad, because otherwise your salad dressing is not going to stick to it. It's going to like whoop, roll off. Okay, so look with how beautiful the direction of our salad is going, right? And I haven't added my pita chips yet, because first we have to make our salad dressing. And the salad dressing is... Again, we need the garlic. And again, for those who don't like garlic, omit it, make it yours, no problem. We are flex these days. That's what you have to be accommodating, flexible, and roll with the punches. I love garlic, so, and I have garlic. So I'm gonna use the garlic. Um, and garlic is also really good for building your immune system as well. Um, so I'm going to, you remember, I have to pound it to get that, the papers off. Um, here we go. And I'm going to stick it into my squeezer. <clears throat> here we go. And I have back up here because I didn't empty it properly before. So I'm just going to clean it out properly, slow down a bit. Here we go. I got the paper out. And we're going to start again with the peeling of it. Here we go. Sorry, my mistake. I didn't see that guy in there. Here we go push it in. We're going to press it through. There we go. Now we're pushing. Here we go. And the other ingredients we're going to be adding again, we have our amazing lemons that we, we um, showed how amazing it is to juice the lemons. And I'm trying to find my fork, which is somewhere. Okay, here it is. Anna. Yeah. We have a couple of questions coming in about the salad. I'm not sure when you want to um, answer those. Sure, uh, throw them to me my way. Throw them right now. Okay. While I take up the pins. So how far in advance can you prepare this salad other than the herbs? You can do it two days in advance. Just chop it up and keep it in Ziploc bags or wrap it in like paper towels. You'll be good to go. Just keep uh, everything you, separated. Can you use dry herbs? No, 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 <laughs> just don't. Another question is the first or some chopped leaf. lettuce into it. Um, but no, never, I never, ever, ever use any dry herbs. Is the parsley store bought? Um, uh oh, are we frozen? Can you, can you hear me? Hello? Hi. Hi, we're yes. back. You're, you were frozen for a second. Oh no, I hope it was a good pose. Um, do you put uh, the parsley in the fridge or do you leave it on your counter? I put it in my fridge and what I do, thank you for asking me that. Remember the days when we traveled? I took all those shower caps and I take the shower cap and I put it on top of my herbs and I put it in my fridge like that. So if you see it, you're gonna use it. If you don't see it, you're not gonna use it. And it's gonna get suffocated in that plastic bag. So pull out all those shower caps and imagine yourself, you know, traveling again. Um, could you just repeat, what temperature did the pita chips cook for and how long? The pita chips cook for, they're at 350 degrees for I would say about like 10, 15 minutes. It depends on how um, thick your pita bread was. You know, the thin, thin, thin ones will go much faster and it really starts smelling delicious in here. Like my house smells really good. Um, and if you could show us the bowls. What okay. <laughs> so, we, we, we don't, yes, thank you. We, okay, we can't so see the counter. The salad, and it's what we made just now, guys. I had no backup of this, okay? So this is the salad and here is our gorgeous dressing which um, 
olive oil, lemon juice, garlic, salt, and pepper. Um, super easy. If you ever find that you're, it's too tangy for you, you just want to balance it with a little bit of maybe some maple syrup, which I know you all have. Here in Israel, you can use a little bit of silan or honey. Um, but I always find that little balance. Sometimes, sometimes lemons are too acidic and you want to find the balance. Um, so just balance it out with a little bit of sweetness, like a teaspoon, of, and then you'll, you'll get there. And the best way to test, um, to test a dressing is actually take something from the salad and taste it and go, wow, that tastes amazing. Or, oh, it's feeling it doesn't have enough energy for me. So that's what you want to do. Thank you. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, uh, please send me, Gail, uh, at Beth Tikva, your private messages. Thank you. Okay, so the salad is mixed right here. And, and now I'm mixing it up with my fork again, my fancy tool that I have such a sponsor for. Everybody has a fork in their house. Um, look how gorgeous this is looking. And I'm going to go get my beautiful pita chips and sprinkle them right on top. Remember, a crouton has to stay crunchy. You don't want a soggy one. In time, it will get soggy. This is life. But you got to maximize the good moments. Here we go. Here's our salad. And back to you, Arit. It looks delicious, really. And uh, the pita uh, croutons are amazing. Um, and the za'atar that you spread on top. And also, I want to show you, um, yesterday I was in the market. Uh, we are on a lockdown, but the market um, is um, one kilometer from my house, so we can walk. Like if we go to shopping, one kilometer from our house is, uh, is okay. So I went yesterday to the market as I do three, four times a week. As I've said, it's my second home. And, and I went into my favorite uh, spice store to buy some spices. And I wanna uh, show you something that I filmed about the Israeli local spices, which is the za'atar and the sumac and the olive oil and the things that you can really find over here. So I'm gonna share it in a minute. Uh, this uh, place is called Ras El Chanut, which is a great, great spice store. And here it is. Wait, sorry. There you go. I'm standing next to my favorite spice store in the market. Uh, this uh, spice store is called Ras El Chanut. Ras El Chanut, uh, for those who are not familiar, it's actually a blend of 10 to 15 different spices from the Northern African cuisine, which I use almost for every dish that I make. Um, this store is amazing because it has a variety of spices from all around the world. But what I'm interested in is the local spices like za'atar and sumac and tahini and uh, olive oil. I love this store because everything is fresh and clean and you know exactly what you buy. You know when you go and you buy spices like in the supermarket for example, 30 to 40 percent of what you'll buy is a substitute. They would add corn flour, rice flour, wheat flour, everything in order to lower the price down because spices are very very expensive. Here they grind everything on the spot so I know exactly what I get. Take a look at these beautiful colors, and I wish you could actually smell it it's so strong. Um, you know, there's a lot of different spices uh, that are imported, but one of the spices that you can find here in Israel that grows in the area of the mountains is za'atar. When we talk about za'atar, we actually talk about two different things. One is the herb itself, which is called hyssop and it is um, a cousin of the oregano and the thyme. And another thing is this blend that you can see over here. This is a blend that is made from four different things. First of all, the hyssop, which is the herb. And then you can see that there are sesame seeds inside, usually roasted, salt, and another thing that is called sumac. This mix is so popular. You, we eat it with everything, with olive oil, with bread, on cheese, one of the ways to know that you buy your spices in a good place is to see that they save their spices in uh, closed drawers. Um, 
I usually buy spices every three to four months because it's not the same, you know, the essence and the flavor and everything. Um, one of my favorite spices is sumac. I use it a lot and it's used all over the uh, Levant. It's uh, basically very um, sour. It's like this mix of lemon and salt together. When you go and you buy sumac, you have two options. One is this, which is the spice or a blend of different spices that has a sumac inside. And another thing is this, which is the pure sumac. You can really see the fruit. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, spice store. I love it. I shop every, um, I would say I change my spices every uh, two, three months, but uh, I shop there everything, really. I love uh, going to the market. It has a lot of, uh, I don't know, I feel alive when I'm there because everyone is yelling and it's not the same. Like it's not as it used to be uh, until March, but still, if you want to feel some life, you'll go to the market uh, because you can see some people and also some of the stores and some of the places are still open. So as I've said, this spice store was open uh, yesterday and it was really a uh, chagiga, like it was uh, very uh, fastest for me. Um, I, um, we've had the tahini, which is amazing. And we've had the salad with all of the spices. What are we going to have uh, now, Shauna? Well, we need the main course. So, but first of all, that video of sumac, which is thank God for Arit, this is how we balance each other. I forgot to add the sumac to my salad. So part of the pizzazz of the fatouche salad, which the beautiful salad you just saw, is sprinkling it with the sumac, which is a be that beautiful spice that you just saw um, that from the market, from Ras El Khanout, and combined with the lemon, it makes you just like, just want to eat. So it has this gorgeous color to it. Um, I'm sure many of you know this brand, Pereg. You can get it in Toronto. Um, and like... Arid said, our spices do go bad. They do get flat. So um, look at this as an opportunity. We can't buy anything else these days. So go buy new spices and splurge. So <laughs> back to spices, we're going to be making shawarma chicken. And you're kind of going, shawarma, I can barely understand what you're saying. What language is it? Well, I don't have an herb. Is it made with paprika? You know, yes, paprika is one of the spices, but shawarma is a mixture of different spices. So when you see shawarma spice that you buy in the store, and this is how they mark it, this is as authentic as it gets, the fancy packaging, they weigh it. Um, and this is like any store in Israel, even the corner store to buy cigarettes has shawarma spice, if you could believe it. Would wow, it just pops out. And that's the difference when you have fresh spices versus old spices. Old spices aren't bad. They're not going to ruin your food, but they're not going to wowsy dowsy your food. So already starting with quality ingredients that are fresh are going to improve your cooking 300%. So this is the shawarma spice I just bought yesterday, but we aren't all lucky to get shawarma spice. And I want to show you how you can make your own version of a shawarma spice. And the recipe um, is, you know, Gail has it, so I'm not going to go through the details of it, but I do want to show you the, you know, how Arit felt alive in the spice store. I felt alive just making this little like um, palette of spices, just to show you the richness of the colors, the richness of the flavors, and really like you travel around the world looking at these spices. So for all those online, you can play the guessing game with me. Um, we have yellow, which is turmeric. Yes, I see some Paula's going, yes, she knows what that is. Um, and then I have paprika. Everybody knows paprika from peppers. Um, we have some cumin over here. We have some ginger over here. We have some coriander over here. We have some cayenne, kharif, kharif, pepper over here. And who knows what these little green guys over here are. Those are called cardamom pods. And um, they're actually a very good digestive. And I just didn't have any flat cardamom at the point, this point, but you can roast these and then grind them in a coffee grinder and they're fantastically fragrant. So these, all of these, uh, and pepper as well, um, all of these spices come together to make like a curry powder, okay? So it's a shawarma powder. 
of it. And that's what we're gonna be seasoning our chicken with. And like what um, Arit said, when you go to these stores, you buy these bottles and you keep refilling. You don't buy bottles like this of spices. Um, and if I did, somehow the guy was heavy handed with the scoop, which they love to do. Um, what I do is I, you know, divide it up amongst my friends or I stick the, the balance in my freezer. And so all my spices are staying fresh in my freezer. And I just put small amounts in my containers. And that way they don't get robbed of humidity and the strength. And, and you wanna keep them in a place that's close to your cooking because if you have to go like this into something, I promise you, you're gonna go, ah, I can't be bothered. And so you want them close to a place, but you don't want them in a place where lots of humidity are going into them because then it's gonna rob all that flavor from it. And a great activity, I know everybody is uh, nesting and organizing and buying containers and stuff. You can reorganize, put cute labels, because I find I need to have the label on the top because I'm looking down at my spices and nothing is more annoying than having to go like this, pull every single one out. So whatever your system is, I like labels on top because I have a drawer and that makes it more accessible to me. So we're starting off with some boneless chicken and this is it. And the thing with chicken is, is that it doesn't, it doesn't take um, a long time to cook. Hence, that's why we're, we're doing it for this class. Also, it's accessible. Everybody, you know, has chicken. You can use the, as they say, pargy oat. You can use dark meat. You could do white meat. Whatever makes your, you know, whatever your family likes to eat. That's the most important because we're not into, interested in making stuff that nobody's going to eat because, um, or make it for a friend or, you know, um, but we're not wasting. So what I have here is the chicken and I've added two lemons to it, juicing it. You saw how I juiced the lemons. I added <clears> some um, olive oil as well. I have added some garlic. These are all my toys. These are all my friends this class. And um, a heaping, heaping amount of shawarma spice, two tablespoons of shawarma spice. And this has been sitting for a few hours in my fridge with saran wrap. So what I'm gonna be doing is, I have a grill pan over here. I'm not sure if any of you can see it. Here we go, it's right here. We're cooking live and um, the windows are open just in case. But if you don't have a grill pan in your house, which is totally fine, what you can do for this chicken is you can put it in a Pyrex and put them together, make them safoof, as they say, hug them, you know, because white meat especially goes dry very quickly. So put them in an oven at 350 and uh, 425, and you can uh, bake, cook them for about 15 to 20 minutes. Again, it really depends on the thickness of your chicken. If you have very, very thin chicken that you, you know, like um, scallopini, like you really got it pounded, like so nice, and you're worried it's all gonna burn, roll them up and put them in a loaf pan and put them side by side like soldiers and put them in the oven together. And that way they, they're holding each other and you're not gonna get dry edges on that. So the most important is being mindful of the, sh of the sizes so they all cook at around the same size. So when you are using a grill pan, you always want to um, grease it a little bit. And I hope this works. Do you hear the sizzle? Here we go. I'm putting my chicken right on. Again, one day I'll have the overhead mirror here. But one day you'll be in Israel and you'll be in my kitchen. You'll be with Arit and I. And we won't have to do this computer mama demo stuff. But this is an idea. I want you to hear that chicken going. Um, that's very important because Cooking is very sensory and um, you should enjoy the process of it because everybody eats it up in two seconds. So if you don't enjoy the journey of it, hmm, not so good. So buy yourself some cute little gadgets, pull out your pretty bowls. This is the time. I promise you everybody is going to appreciate the time and the effort that you put into your meal. Some more than others. Some are winners. Some are not. That's how we get better at become better cooks. So I'm gonna continue grilling this. I'm gonna point the pan down so you can see it. Um, here we go. Can everybody see what I'm doing? And I'm gonna pass it back to Aris while this grill keeps going. Okay. 
So uh, as Shauna said, shawarma is very Israeli, not just Israeli, but in Israel, you see a lot of people, you know, the pita bread that we've seen is this pocket and people are eating on the street. This is really street food, the, the pita bread with shawarma or whatever. And uh, in Machane Huda, there is uh, an amazing new uh, shawarma stand that I love. Uh, which is open in between the lockdowns. So um, I'm going to show you uh, the thing that I filmed of it there. Um, wait in a minute. There you go. When thinking of the Israeli street food, I can't help myself from imagining this holding this pita bread, which is stuffed with hummus and falafel or with schnitzel and chips or kebab or uh, shawarma, and of course some salads, and tahini, and amba, and schug. And you take a bite and everything drips, and you have this tahini stain that goes with you for the rest of the day. Um, when Yossi opened the Aka, this place, like two months ago, I told him finally there is a good shawarma in Jerusalem. Now, shawarma, gyros, and doner are actually words to describe the same thing, which is the spin. And it doesn't matter if it's made from a chicken or turkey or veal or lamb, it's all delicious. We are going now to uh, meet Yossi and hear about his perfect bite. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Yossi, Yossi Zwebner. I'm the owner here in Aka. This is our pita bread. We take it and basically we hug the doner. What that gives us, we don't need the extra moisture, but what I do want is a little bit of the taste of the doner already built in inside the bread. Next stage, a little bit of scordilia. Scordilia is originated in Greece. It's uh, almond garlic paste. With uh, We do it with apple cider vinegar, a lot of garlic. If you're dating, try to avoid it, but if you're not, by all means. Afterwards, layers of freshly cut tomatoes. No seasoning to the tomatoes. A little bit of what I call, I know it doesn't sound very sexy, but sweaty onions, which means we cut the onions and we give it a little bit of salt. Not to salt it, just to redraw the moisture, to redraw the liquids and take a bit of the bite of raw onion out of it. So you get the freshness of the onion, but it's lacking the, it's lacking the, the, the sharpness. It's lacking the, that onion taste that people usually less like. Next stage, the doner. We try to cut it very, very thin. As you see, it's perfectly caramelized charred outside. And we have even a little bit of pinkness left on the inside. That's the advantage of doing something with veal. You don't need to stick when you do it with poultry. You have to have it 100% cooked. But over here, as you see, it's still a little bit pink inside, perfectly charred on the outside. Next thing that goes in is vegan yogurts. The vegan yogurt is made also with garlic, which you see we like very much. A lot of fresh mint, lemon juice and salt, and tofu, which we less like, but over here it works pretty good. Amba, which whoever's been in Israel's side, and a lot of street food, you can find it in falafel shops and shawarma shops and sabich, which if you're familiar with, but we give it just a little bit of amba, just a little bit of hint, a little bit of acidity. We don't want the hardcore taste, we don't want it to overwhelm the rest of the sandwich. Fold it, as you see it's pretty thin, it's not like uh, the regular ones you would find. We like it so in one bite you can get all the flavors, you don't need to work around the sandwich. This in our eyes is the perfect bite. You get all the elements, the scordilia, the onions, the tomatoes, the fresh herbs, even a little bit of a ruby of a pistachio over here. And with one bite you could do the whole thing. So this is how we like it, this is how we make it. We'll be more than happy to have you. It's unbelievable. I ate an hour ago and I'm like, I look at that and I instantly want to eat again. It's, it's unbelievable. And what is amazing is that you can make 
a shawarma at home, which is as good and sometimes even better. So Shauna, how's your shawarma? <laughs> so I have one gorgeous piece, all grilled and beautiful. The rest is still on my pan, as you can see the smoke. Um, but just so you see the grill marks, whenever you're grilling chicken, you never, you want to make sure your pan is super hot or your barbecue super hot and grease and put your chicken on and don't touch it for a few minutes. Make sure it gets seared. If you feel like you're tugging with it, that means that it's not ready to be flipped. Leave it alone for another minute. And then when it loosens up, it will tell you when it's ready to be flipped. So that's really the secret. So I want to close off with just showing you, we have our dinner tonight. My kids will be happy. We have the fatu salad with the za'atar pizza tip. We have the beautiful cena that's going to go on my grilled chicken that's continuing to smoke up here. I have the chicken, the grilled chicken, just one piece as we're, we're pulling them all out. And I just want to do a lachaim to, again, Millie. I know Diet Coke is her favorite drink. She always brought it wherever she went. So um, lachaim to um, a life, a beautiful legacy, a beautiful community. And, and thank you again for inviting both Orit and I here today to travel with you. Um, we can't wait to invite you when the skies are open to join us, possibly on our women's trip, possibly on a best pick up mission. And um, we wish you all health and happiness and, and stay safe. Thank you so much, Shauna and Orit. Um, it's lunchtime now in Toronto and uh, you've definitely uh, made me hungry. I have a question about the chicken, Shauna. Did you cut it up or did you pull it? So what you're gonna do right now is I'm gonna let it cool for five minutes and then I'm gonna chop it up. So I'm gonna actually, I can chop up this piece right now and then I can serve it, it's actually beautiful. And how do you know when chicken is ready? When it's white inside, not pink. Pink is not a friendly color. And so you just chop it up like that. So it looks like the guy shaving it. And um, to have some pita around, you know, you could stuff it in pockets. If you don't want the carbs, forget the pita, you already have it in the salad and you're good to go. So just wait a few minutes till it comes together all the after you cook it. You shouldn't touch it right away. Just let everything come together and all the juices come in and then cut it up. And it's, it's wonderful. And um, another question I had, if people have questions for you or they want to reach out, do you oh, have I an email questions. address or a website? So I don't have a website. I have, I'm on Facebook, um, but I'm at chefshauna at gmail.com. I know Arit's email, if you have any questions, she has gorgeous herbs behind her that she went foraging through her woods in Jerusalem that she didn't get to speak to because there's so much to talk about here. There's so much to do. So <laughs> um, I know Arit, Arit, what's your email that everybody can reach you at? Uh, Arit.tour uh, at gmail.com. Okay, and, and uh, if people miss that, they can always reach out to me at uh, gail at bettikvatoronto.org. So thank you once again. And um, we'll see, hopefully one day, God willing, we'll all be able to get to Israel and, and visit both of you. Absolutely. Be thank well, you. everybody. Thank you. Bye. See you in Israel. <laughs>